I've been working on an RPG game about witches called Mana Valley for the past few months and the support has been absolutely incredible. So seriously, thank you to everyone who has been watching and is subscribed. I originally thought the game would have a super small audience, so I wasn't too concerned about performance. When I started, one of the assets I was using only worked with Unity's built-in renderer, so I decided to use that for my project. Turns out the Unity docs say its newer URP rendering is poggers for performance and totally the future, man. So since over 300,000 of you have been cool enough to wishlist Mana Valley on Steam, I wanna make sure even Jonas's toaster can run it. But changing renderers means every single material and light is affected. So it makes sense to switch sooner rather than later. Oh, there's just one material I have to fix. After a couple days of feeling like I was drowning in Pepto-Bismol and finicking with lighting, I think the game should look generally the same. Actually, this is the first time I've seen them side by side and they don't look anything alike, do they? At least I built a frame per second counter and that initially showed improvements. The thing is, I forgot to write down what FPS I was getting before I made the switch and I can't remember. So for the sake of argument, let's just say this change gave us 1000% increase in FPS. Okay, now that's done. Over the past few weeks, I've developed an issue with this checker texture I've been staring at for months. It's simply got to go. Luckily, Unity, the sponsor of this video, developed a really cool feature for the terrain tool that lets you paint textures and I've been having a ton of fun using it. I spent a bunch of time working on the starting area for Mana Valley, sculpting and painting as I went. And while painting everything a single texture will make your game look like it's straight out of the 90s, actually painting and mixing textures can look pretty good. Games like Escape from Tarkov and Firewatch, which were both made using Unity, are great examples of what the terrain tool can help achieve. Unity also has free resources specifically about terrain on Unity Learn, which I wish I would have looked into before starting this process, but I was honestly kind of in a trance because terrain painting and sculpting was incredibly relaxing for me and I enjoyed it so much. After I had the terrain painted, I moved on to manually placing trees and the relaxing part disappeared. After about 30 minutes of placing trees, I looked at my project to realize I had accidentally copied a low poly version of the tree and had to redo all of that work. But thankfully, I'm full of mistakes. And at some point while fixing my last mistake, I realized I missed the spot when texture painting and because I have grandpa-like control of my mouse, I accidentally hovered over this button and the text that showed up was like a message sent from heaven. That's neat, right? But get this. It aligns the trees to the terrain, even if you change the terrain after you place them. It can also randomize height and rotation, which is super important when you're trying to make a handful of tree assets not feel like a handful of tree assets. And possibly my biggest discovery, while it's called paint trees, you can actually use it to paint any prefab. So I've been using it for everything that goes on the ground, like rocks and grass too. I know I'm geeking out a little bit here, but honestly, I had no idea this feature existed. To the point where a few months ago, I made an editor script to place objects on the terrain for me, and I know at least one other developer who's done the same, because I got the idea from this video. I really can't be bothered to manually scatter these around though, so I decided to write a little script that will align it with the ground below. Regardless, creating the starting area has been helpful in bringing the story of Mana Valley to life. So much so that it inspired a vision for an intro cutscene that I couldn't get out of my head. So I just made it. This was something I had never really done before and it ended up coming out pretty much exactly how I had envisioned. The only missing part is that I also imagined Morgan Freeman narrating it. I professionally approached him via tweet and am just waiting to hear back. In the meantime, my most immediate milestone is to get the game to an alpha so a small group of people can start testing. That means having a playable game. So naturally, I spent time making these little animations for save slots. And because I know how heartbreaking it would be if you accidentally fat fingered your save file, there's also a confirm screen. Clicking a save slot does exactly what you'd think and clicking new game will take you to a new loading screen and then through the intro cutscene.
I know some of you had asked for the option for a more masculine character. One of the things I enjoy about this particular character style is that it lends itself pretty well to gender ambiguity, which is just a fancy way of saying that it may not always be obvious whether a character is a boy or girl. So during character customization, you'll be provided with a bunch of customization options, even more than you see here, and you'll be able to make those choices for yourself. I even went as far as having the random names that are generated for new characters be gender neutral. And if you have any suggestions of your own, let me know. After the player confirms their customization, the camera shifts and now they're in the story. And then it takes about five seconds before the immersive experience is completely broken by a lack of floor, walls, and anything to do. Just add floors and walls, you say? Here's the thing. These house parts come from an asset I'm using. When I tried to use them to assemble my own design, everything had to be scaled down and nothing aligned to a grid. Oftentimes, 3D art is based on look and feel, and that's fine for most people, but I have a background in architecture, and despite my repeated attempts to defeat that part of me, I need order and precision. So for whatever dumb reason, I opted to edit these assets to the scale I need them, put them at a module size, and relocate their center points in a useful location. On the surface, that may not seem like a big deal until you realize I'm scaling these modules non-uniformly, so all of the UVs have to be redone. A UV is basically just how a texture gets assigned to a surface. And in addition to that, most of these assets have LOD options, so I actually need to edit multiple models. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, an LOD just means level of detail. And Unity has this feature where you can assign different meshes to an LOD group. This allows you to use less detailed models when the camera is far from an object and more detailed ones when the player is close. I'm committed to doing that because I think it will be worth it in the long run, but it does really slow down progress in the meantime. So that's my current task, which will be followed by adding crafting and building. And until I get to those, you can watch this video to see how I added flying to the game.